Welcome everyone back to the Commander Clash podcast episode 81 and today we're going over our top picks from Phyrexia all will be one. So join with me is Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. Hello. <laughs> Good to see you. Uh we have Count Krim, the Asian <laughs> Avenger with a <laughs> with a cape. What's going on? <laughs> Oh, dude, it, it's not Dracula. Come on now. It's Doctor Strange. Also, oh, it's, a it's a Snuggie. It's a Snuggie, so it works out perfectly. Like, I get to just walk around and be warm in my in my little Doctor Strange cloak. So, it's nice. All right. And then we have Budget Commander Tomer. How are you doing? Yo, I am excited to talk about cards. All right. <laughs> and then uh, myself, Richard the Codfather. Uh, to round out the crew. So today, we have Phyrexia, all is one cards. We have chosen 12 cards to talk about. Uh, not necessarily the most powerful cards, although the cards here are very powerful. Uh, just kind of cards we are excited about to play uh, in Commander on the upcoming set. And we've included cards from the main set, from the supplemental products, from the set boosters. So basically everything Phyrexian related. Uh, so let's kick things off. Oh, before we kick things off, remember, if you enjoy our show, uh, give us a like, give us a follow, give us a subscribe on Spotify, iTunes, uh, Google Podcasts, YouTube. Uh, we're everywhere. So feel free to subscribe and keep up with the latest episodes. So away we go, Seth. Wait, 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 have... wait. But what about, what wait, about if wait. we want to support financially? How do we do that, Richard? <laughs> Give me oh. your monies. Give me yeah, your how monies. Do we just Go to goldfishmerch.com and clear out Richard's garage. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of stuff there still. Uh, it survived <laughs> flooding, so we're good. We're good. It, it'll be dry. <laughs> uh, so kicking things off, the the kind of namesake character of the set, I guess. Uh, Seth, who, who, what have you brought as the first card to talk about? I mean, pretty obvious choice. Elish Norn, Mother of Machines, uh, our new Panharmonicon. It's a, it's a five band of four seven Phyrexian Praetor legendary creature. It is Vigilance, and it's a Panharmonicon for you. If a permanent entering the battlefield triggers an ability, you get to trigger an additional time, and it's a Torpor Orb for your opponent's permanents entering the battlefield. Don't cause your opponent's permanents to trigger, essentially. So all of your ETB stuff is doubled up. All of your opponent's ETB stuff doesn't happen. So for me, I mean, I'm excited about this because it's another Panharmonicon. Panharmonicon, Yarok are like my favorite cards. I love doubling things up. And this is the best Panharmonicon for multiple reasons. Like its body's really good for one thing. A 4-7 actually uh, gums up the ground really, really well. And then its Torpor ability is kind of insane to the point where this is a card that, uh, <laughs> that Sheldon from the RC infamously like told wizards not to print because it was going to be so miserable. Um, the, the card shuts down a lot. If you just look at the most played creatures in Commander, there's a lot of Sun Titans and Eternal Witnesses and Baleful Strixes and Dockside Extortionists that are based on ETB triggers. Their power is almost exclusively based on ETB triggers, and that doesn't even include, like, Landfall. It shuts that down. Landfall is a permanent entering the battlefield under your opponent's control. Uh, so Elish Norn. I think it's sweet as a commander, although being mono white does limit its power as a commander. Uh, you can still build a sweet deck, but it's kind of, I think, as a commander, it reminds me a little bit of Preston the Vanisher or some other mono white blink style commander, where I think it's roughly on that tier. But in the 99, you can jam this in any Panharmonicon style deck or arguably even just any white deck, because uh, I know, Richard, you're a big believer of this. A lot of the best white cards are spirited companions, and these cheap creatures that, like, ETB draw a card, that's how you generate your card advantage. LS Jorn just supercharges all that stuff, while also really hosing your opponent. So, I think this card is really good. I'm not in the, it's so busted, we can't print it camp, but I do think it not only is my favorite card from the set, but one of the most powerful commander cards from the set. I wasn't here for the podcast where you guys talked about Elish Nord, but I'm going to take my uh, 30 seconds here and uh, agree with Sheldon. Uh, Sheldon is a spirited companion player, apparently. Like, <laughs> this card is so good, and it, it does the number one thing that we're not allowed to do in Commander, which is perpetually stop all your stuff forever. Uh, like, a board wipe is fine. But something that just continually board wipes every turn is not fine, right? Like something that wipes the graveyard is this fine, is but something board. that locks out the graveyard <laughs> is not fine, right? And this is like a hushbringer that just sits there 
and generates you so much value so you feel inclined to play it while hosing everyone else. And is it, like, obscenely broken? No. Is it super obnoxious and annoying? Yes. Right? It's like Armageddon, right? Is, is, is Armageddon OP? No. Is it very bad to play against? Yes. <laughs> right? You're so, the one who plays it all the time, Richard. I play it <laughs> yeah, for no the one... memes, but I wouldn't okay. play it like for reels against like random right. people, right? But so I don't or think would you, know, you? <laughs> it's it's now here. Is it ban worthy? No. But should wizards have printed it? I don't think so, right? Like wizards can print a two mana stacks piece anytime they want. Should they? Probably not. And I feel this is like you know, in that. So, yes, Seth is excited to play against it. I am very excited not to play against Seth, right? Because every game he's going to play this thing, and I'm like, oh, I've grown, right? You got to get, you got to deal with it, got to hold up the removal, got to, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think everyone will be playing this card, so. Good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. So, so, Give into so your control I, play. Yeah. Maybe, I, maybe. I'll just play maybe one, one just tokens to... of flying and call it a day. We don't need, we don't need abilities. Will this, will this actually convince you to, to, to run Swords of Plashers then? Yeah, trade no, it the... will convince me yeah. to kill Seth, like, <laughs> super fast, right? right. Like, we use player removal, right? Okay. It, I, I don't think this card's gonna be as heavily played as you think. Like, yeah, I really, really don't. In, in not you could play in any deck and it would be fine. Maybe it'd be correct, <laughs> but it's also $65 for the cheapest oh, printing okay, right now. Okay. We've seen in the past, like Jeweled Lotus is a card that I think essentially every deck would be more powerful if they played or Mana Crypt is maybe the best example. Every deck should play a Mana Crypt, but those cards don't see that much play just because the price is so high. So I think that the fact that this is a mythic and super expensive will keep it in line, and the fact that people are already grumbling about it will keep some people from playing it just Get because they don't want to be money, like the huh? bad guy. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want to. We already spent like thirty minutes talking about Alishnorn before, so I don't want to like beat the dead horse. But I'm still just like gobsmacked that people would like. Uh, it's certain certain people might say like Spirit Companion is like a number one mono white card. Or whatever, but I just, I, it's just not a reality for me. Like, I, I personally will not be putting Elish Norn in most of my decks. I would consider it maybe for like my Aura Enchantress deck, but that's it. <laughs> Basically, I don't, I don't have a Brago deck. I don't have a, a Preston deck. I, it's not my style of play and I want to run it there. Most of my white decks, I just don't want it. So I don't know. I'm kind of, I don't think it's going to be that popular, honestly. It's going to be very popular. It's a very powerful card. It's one of the strongest cards from the the set, but I just don't think it's like okay. a, a staple, like an auto include. <laughs> did you did you like yeah like Are you not playing it because you like again just because you think it's not needed in your deck, or are you not playing it because people will look at it weird because you because you know people are upset about the card? Oh, I just like, I just don't, don't think don't it's think like it. that good in most of my like I ha- I just made an Ishin deck. Am I going to put this in Ishin? No. Like that's I feel like deck. if you're not if you're not getting value out of it's Panharmonicon yeah. mode. Like, Tarp Orb's not a staple. Like, I don't think being a, a five minute four seven is a nice bonus, but I don't think that's enough that it's like, wow, I gotta put that in my deck. Look at that, you know, look at that body. Um, so I don't know. I, I feel like Titan, Torp Orb like, would see more play if it was, uh, you don't you need know, to like build around Sun Titan, Titan, but most decks can get value out of Sun Titan, right? Sun Titan so that, does something by itself. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, it's a 4-7 Vigilance Panharmonicon plus Torpor Orb, right? Yeah, it but if I something. put down Elish Norn, <laughs> the only thing it does is it potentially shuts down my opponents depending on what cards they run. But, like, I'm I'm not even running Janet's Magistrate. And Janet's Magistrate 100% shuts down everybody's deck because everybody runs a commander and usually builds around their commander. I don't even run that because, like... 99% of the time a moral just, gray area thing or no yeah, it just unites the table against area, me right? it's just, it's just yeah. like I, it I, usually I, it usually lowers my EV I find if I run Dranith Magistrate so yes. I'm not gonna run this I, just I'm for in, a I'm in a, a f- full agreement with Tomer by the way like I, I I don't I think it's not even a moral gray area thing I think Dranith Magistrate just isn't that good <laughs> I think it's good in CDH um, then, oh CDH it's absurd yeah uh, it's absurd but like casual, it's just okay. Like it's being casual, true. if I'm not, and, if I'm trying to go for like a twelve turn game, it's like no, you're gonna actually just kill me. <laughs> like you have the time. And Elish Norn, I okay. El- Elish Norn is your commander. Obviously, is gonna be annoying, right? Uh, like because then you're gonna just see it every time. As it, well, actually, I mean, I don't know how many times your opponent can pay for Elish Norn. Let, let's say three times it dies. 
I think they're done, right? Like, I think it they're is done a lot of all. mana. Yeah, you, you can so, double all your catch up ramp. It's okay. <laughs> you you could you you could try. Yes, I it's, I don't know. I mean, like this card is just good. Like it is. It's a it's a powerful card, but it is. It, it doesn't. It I just don't feel like it's anything different than like oh, would I play Panharmonicon in my deck? No. So it's good. Uh, it's a little costly to hate out all my opponent's ETBs because. It, again, it truly is one of those things where you have to take advantage of that e- e- doubling of the ETBs because it as a, if you're trying to stack someone out, it costs a lot. You want to get underneath all the nonsense, but not not play it after the nonsense has happened. All right, so we'll we'll see where Elish Norn shakes up. Elish Norn is sitting around like fifty dollars currently. So while it may not be super popular, enough people are buying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I mean, those, yeah. those are standard like like modern more. players. Those are modern players, Richard. Oh, yeah. Standard yes. players. Yes. Yeah. Is standard. there actually a modern deck for this? You, you, that, like, no, right? No, no. Okay. Okay. Right. Whatever modern. you want to this force. This card's busted. But I don't think... You all wait. You all wait. <laughs> this card's busted. In modern. Move over, Ogneth. We've got a new. The only, the only Elish Norn I'm getting is the Junji Ito one, and that's it. That's the one I want, and I refuse. If I open it, I'm throwing it away. Okay, I'm not throwing it away, but I, but I am gonna, but I am gonna go and get it. <laughs> like, all right. Uh, next up, so we are like 30 days into 2023. It's uh, currently end of January. This will be February. This podcast goes up. Uh, I'm calling my next card. The most broken card of 2023. Ooh. I'm calling it right here. Yo. Mirren's Safe House. Three mana artifact. It's a rare. As long as Mirren's Safe House is on the battlefield, it has all activated abilities of all lands and all and graveyards. All the this most broken blessed. commander card of 2023 right here. I will put really? it in every single non-green deck. Really? Wait, explain this Why to me, Richard. Why? Okay. What makes this card so the, three, the, the floor of this, comboing? The floor of this is a three mana's nature's lore. Sure, right? yeah, because so okay. there's a fetch land. If, if there's a fetch land in the graveyard, this is three mana ramp in blue, black, and red. An unheard of card, right? And we're not even talking about cases where you somehow like snag a cradle or some nonsense like that, right? Just a three mana colorless fetch land is one of the best cards that has been printed to date because those colors cannot ramp, and this is real ramp. Uh, so I think this is actually insane, absolutely insane, and you're not even like trying to copy like City of Traders or Ancient Tombs or anything like that. Just a straight-up fetch land. Okay. But what about if someone blows up, you know, uh, like your your coffers or something? This yeah. has that, right? Yeah, like you can strip mine of coffers and then use it too, right? But just okay. just just the floor of a fetch land is good enough for me. And I think Grix's colors will happily pay three mana for a nature's lore. But I, it's just like a, it's just I, so I you can pay three mana for a commander's with Richard. sphere. No, it's but the, the commander's sphere gets blown up. You see, like imagine okay. your arcane signet was indestructible, hex proof, cannot be sacrificed cannot be exiled like no one can touch lands uh so it is actually like a real honest good land and not a mana rock hmm i think there's a little more risk than you're giving it credit for okay, with the, yes like, yes you can may not if have you're a fetch playing land. mono blue <laughs> right? you might not have like the right color of fetch land to be able to get an island out of your deck or something mm-hmm. like i think there's a little well you have your own fetch there. lands right so you your your deck has fetch lands plus your okay. opponent's fetch lands right so, so you, mono you have some, okay. let, some leeway there. Let me let me ask you this then, Roger. There's a card called Manascape Refractor, which is the same card, except it's for lands on the battlefield, that sees playing zero percent of decks. Why is that not like a staple who, of my blue deck since I can play a fetch land and then fetch, crack this to well, you, gotta, you gotta hold the fetch land the entire time, <laughs> right? <laughs> Waiting for this thing, which is okay. which is kind of which is kind of hard, right? Hmm. I I mean, Interesting. you you did sell me that it's a it's it's kind of like kind of like I, you guys talked about Mirror Maid. I got to watch that because I edited that video, and I, I like that idea of like okay, these these are colors that don't generally get to ramp land ramp. So having interesting ways of of ramping at three mana is still acceptable. Um, so I can see like yeah, the three mana fetch land is kind of kind of neat for for non green decks 
there and obviously there's better applications to it outside of that but i just i don't think it's like gonna be the best card of the year or something that is definitely if you look at colorless <laughs> ramp options you Please. have uh wayfarer's bobble you have the swords right sort of the animus hearth and home and the new sword which we're going to talk about you have solemn then Signets, you have like Talismans. burnished heart myriad landscape right and then everything yeah. else is a mana rock a mana dork a treasure or like some impulse mana right like there's very few ways for grixis decks or you know anything that shares mm. grixis colors to get actual durable lands so i believe you should be buying all of these and these should be going into all of your decks uh hmm. maybe even white i don't know so green no green you just play the real op card nature's lore right and then white catch up ramp probably better because it's two mana uh yeah. but definitely grixis has nothing going for it so whoa you, you, you take whoa, dude. whoa whoa, whoa. <laughs> calm down. ramp calm wise down. ramp wise this will get calm you down. to your fourth <laughs> land crib you can hit four land drops with this card i, I did I, miss I mean, the hop you don't picks. have to do much <laughs> You, you don't this, have to convince me too much. I think this card is really good. I don't know if it's the best card that of coming out of this like for the whole year, oh, but is. like it is really good. And uh, I I also looked at this, but more so in a sixty card lens. I guess why? Like I mean, like something like this. I think in like Pioneer, it just gets Nick those abilities, right? Mm-hmm. Like absolutely like silly. I already hate that card enough there. But if I started thinking about it in a hundred cards, okay, I think I'm picking up what you're putting down here. I'm smelling what you're cooking. All right, this is this is good. This is good. I I don't know if it's the best card, but I think it's good. Is is strip mine back on the menu, Seth? I strip uh, mine. It's literally a stone well, rain. Someone's got a stone rain. I mean, strip mine has strip mine has always been on my menu. So I I mean I do think this card's very good, and that's not even like. We're talking about the floor a lot. The ceiling is also really high. The floor is a three mana mana rock. I guess you can argue it's a, a three mana fetch land, but probably a three mana mana rock. Uh, worst case, the ceiling is there's some infinite combos like Griffin Canyon Muta Vault gives you an infinitely big creature, which is kind of cool. Plus, you got the strip mine your cabal coffers, your Gaia's Cradle, your Nykthos, like anything like that. There's some very very strong lands. Also, kind of cute with uh, Lotus Field. Lotus Field's a good way to get yeah. lands in your graveyard, so you can have some synergies there. Or if you get Lotus Field in your graveyard, Yard, or is this the card that makes City of Traders playable, Richard? We had a debate about <laughs> that a couple of episodes ago. Like, build your know. own Worn Power Stone. Uh, it comes this is a Worn Power Stone. You just play Worn Power Stone. This is what you wanted to do. It was, it's it's it untapped, strange. though. It's it untapped. Like, untapped. <laughs> there's, there's a very vocal crowd in our comment section that's like very hardcore CDH and doesn't understand casual and they're like why are you rating city of traders so low it's so good you can immediately <laughs> win t- turn one with blah 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 it's that's his or- <laughs> oracle them no <laughs> i don't, I don't, I don't know what casual commander game is doing I don't that know what's going on you, you haven't convinced me it's the best card of the year, but you have convinced me to put in decks. Like I, I think I was a little too low on this card. I'd try it out for sure. I'd definitely try it out in certain decks. All right. Tomer, what do you have for us? All right. I've got a finisher for equipment decks that I'm very excited for. I, I saw Richard had it as his fourth card, and I just like sniped it. I was like, no, I want to talk about it. I'm excited for this. This is Gold Warden's Gambit. It's an uh, eight mana red sorcery, uh, six and double red, but it has affinity for equipment. So it costs one less to cast for each equipment you control. So it can cost as little as double red mana. And in an equipment deck, that's probably where you're going to be casting it most of the time for two mana instead of eight. Um, and it says create five two two red rebel creature tokens. They gain haste until end of turn. For each of those tokens, you may attach an equipment you control to it. So for basically this... On, on an ideal end, you're paying two red mana to get five tokens. They have haste, and you can put your equipments onto those uh, tokens immediately and immediately swing. This is a great way for equipment decks to recover from a creature board wipe. If somebody's wiping the board of your creatures and your equipments are sticking around, it's still it's better than losing everything uh, all at once, obviously, but you still have to then play creatures, and then you have to pay the equip cost to equip them on them, and then you have to hope they have haste, 
and then you, it still takes it still takes some time to recover from a board wipe. This, however, if your creatures get board wiped or whatever, you get to just equip all your stuff for free. You immediately have attackers. You can immediately start swinging with a bunch of them, and that is really exciting to me. It's a great way to bounce back immediately after after a board wipe, and really either take out everybody uh with your your army of two twos which is it's 10 damage on the board at the very minimum 10 damage haste uh but i thought but since you're equipping stuff uh you're going to be doing much more than 10 damage and you're going to get all those combat triggers immediately i'm really excited for this i have an equipment deck a carry cauldra and this is like exactly what i wanted to do um in the deck as a top end i mean this hmm. looks pretty nah. fun. I, I to be honest <laughs> with you i it looks fun is, it reminds is good. Uh, it reminds me of Reckless Crew, which was what a Keldheim card, where it's like four mana. You make X two one dwarf berserkers, where X is the number of vehicles and equipment you control, and then you get to equip them. Although it doesn't give those creatures haste, so I think the haste has a pretty nice upside. And I guess like eight mana for five two twos. It's not great, but it's not the end of the world. Like, uh, like even if you have zero equipment, it's it's kind of okay. Like, how cheap are you imagining getting this in an equipment deck? I'm tra- that's what I'm trying to envision. Like, how many equipment do you normally have on the battlefield? Is it three? Are we casting this for five mana? Maybe I'm, four I'm mana? Heavy on equipment. Like, I usually have like five on the battlefield at any given time. I also get four wipes, <laughs> so, and then I'm sad. So typically, if you have five like mm-hmm. real equipment, you've won the game. But. If you have five rocks, from <laughs> oh, if you're toe going, oh, oh, you need no. the help. You need the oh, help, right? Oh. So, uh, what's, what's the what's Tom got us with the rocks last commander class? The, the bloodthirsty axe or whatever, the one that clones yeah, itself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, Tom, so that rock their socks last game, uh, Togo rocks, those kind of things. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of like Boros cards that lets you draw a card for each equipped creature, or when an equipped creature deals damage. So mm-hmm. you need to play some, like, mediocre equipment. <laughs> because if you have, like, say, five swords or, like, whatever, like, you're, you're winning already, right? Like, if you have, like, you know, a Colossus Hammer or something, like, you're probably winning. So you need, like, kind of janky equipment. So I really like artifact uh, equipment tokens or, like, cloning decks or something like that. Play the and Morning Star up, thing that makes it goblins. Yeah. I okay. I think it's going to shine the most in the, the go wide equipment deck, obviously. Yeah. Like, I think yeah. if you look at equipment decks, they're kind of like go tall or go wide. You have like Wylith is very like Voltron y, put everything on me. But then you got like New Jorkadine, Akiri Fearless Voyager. These are uh, the night ones, Sir Gwyn. Like, these are ones that reward you for having a lot of creatures with equipment on them. So I think that's where this is going to, uh, this is going to shine the most. Yeah, like, my deck Akiri like deck says, definitely jam it. It draws a card for each equipped creature that's attacking it opponent i control so if i have three opponents i can draw up to three cards so if the is on the battlefield and you cast gold warden's gambit and you have three equipment then you're immediately drawing three cards as you're swinging and stuff so it's it's nice i like it i like it too it's very narrow in case you have a red rebel deck (laughs) those rebels synergies (laughs) is there was there even like a rebel leader there's i guess the phoenix is kind of a rebel leader very tangently but not really one day Jorkadine, that's a that's a human rebel. Sure. What do you have for us, Krim? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, not not surprising at all. Uh, I I love this card since it's been spoiled. It's the Eternal Wanderer. Um, this card just kind of it has everything I want on a planeswalker, and I think as I I sit down and think about it, like it it <coughs> plays a lot better with like uh any of my creature decks and whatnot that also want a planeswalker because you're able to blink your own stuff. Uh, you can obviously can, can make you, a can body. Can you read the book of text? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eternal yes. For the, oh, I the forgot. listeners yeah. at home. For the listeners, it's no, it has a pass. It's six mana, four white, white. No more than one creature can attack the Eternal Wanderer each combat. Uh, then plus one, exile up to one target artifact or creature. Return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the, that player's next end step. Then a zero, create a 2-2 two, two samurai token with double strike. And then minus four. For each player, choose a creature that player controls. Each player sacrifices all creatures they control, chosen, uh, not chosen this way. So, again, the passive makes it nice. They, if they, they can't go around you, because there's only one thing that can go at the Eternal Wanderer. 
unless of course it's like a massive Akiri or something like that, then that's fine. Uh, like that, that's big sad. Uh, but then you have you get to like blink your own stuff, right? Because the passive makes it so things can't go wide. You get to then blink your artifacts, your creatures, and whatnot, or maybe your opponents uh, to see if you can like make some stuff fall off of them if you'd like. Uh, then you get to just make a double striking uh, samurai token, which is actually going to probably be relevant in most games. Uh, and then the minus four, which is a really nice sweeper because you are choosing uh, the be the creature, usually your opponent's worst creature, and then your your best creature, and then everything else gets sacrificed. So. I just love this as a Planeswalker. This feels like a six-mana Planeswalker in Commander. Like, it just does everything I want it to do. It's just nice. The modes don't seem the same. The modes... I think one of the things, like, there's cookie-cutter Planeswalkers, but all three of the modes here just feel drastically different than the other. And it's like, it doesn't feel like... It's just like, oh, kill a thing, draw a card, right? It, it's just actually three different things attached to a Planeswalker, so I really like that. I really and, like and this card, it. too. I mean, I I said I think this card might actually be better than Elish Norn, and I'm still like kind of standing by the idea that this card's really good in Commander. For me, um, definitely playing this in like my Preston Blink deck, any sort of Panormonicon deck, the way I'm thinking of this is, it's a not great wrath that is also a pretty powerful blink effect like a, a thassa or whatever blink something each turn like i get that flexibility so for mm. me this is going in my wrath slot uh is a like slightly watered down wrath but then i get all this extra upside i also think i would just jam it in almost any mono white deck based on that same elish norn thinking of like I'm built around spirited companions. I'm built around sun titans. I'm built around these cheap ETB creatures. Being able to reuse them, really powerful. And because of the static ability, I think this is going to stick around more than most uh, planeswalkers. Most planeswalkers in commander, you play them, you got three opponents, they swarm them and kill them. With only one creature being able to attack, that becomes much more difficult. All you need is one good creature on defense, and you should be able to keep your eternal wanderer around for a few turns. Like a 4-7 yeah. Vigilance that doubles triggers. <laughs> happens it to come curves. at 5 mana. It That's does curve nicely, curve. Elish Norn, into Eternal Wander. Yeah. I'm still not <laughs> on board on every single white deck is a blink deck that runs Spirited Companion. However, I run... But it's Elf a Wrath. Sp this is a Wrath, yeah, Tover. No. It's just a 6-mana Wrath. I am always on board with Planeswalkers that have an immediate important board impact the turn you cast them. Like, I still play Elspeth Sun's Champion, um, in 2023, like a decade after it's been printed, and it's only it's a it follows a same similar pattern. It's a six mana uh, mono white planeswalker that it can enter the battlefield and wrap the board, or it can make creatures, or it can do other stuff. Um, so I think a wanderer follows that very well. I think it's better actually um, than Sun Champion. It's a different decks, but it's better I think overall in the decks I want it to be. Blink, uh, not going wide. Uh, being two big ones. Um, and yeah, all those abilities are very relevant, very powerful, and it's very flexible. I think this card's really good. I don't think it takes your wrath slot, though. Unlike to where I thought really? about this. So I used to play Elish Nord in like, oh no, Elish Nord. Uh, Elspeth's Sun's Elspeth. Champion in every deck because you use it as a, as a wrath, right? And then it's a win con. But maybe in the last three, four years, like it's been power crept. We have so many three, four mana rats that deal with everything. We have all the six mana modal rats, like Farewell, Austere Command. And then you just have like Ondu Inversion, like at the top end and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So there's no room to put the Elspeth. So you you actually kind of need like really good synergy with the pluses, right? It's no longer yeah. like to say Wrath with some upside. You actually need to use the plus. Um, Wander, I don't know. I don't know if the Blink is enough to make me play a six mana Wrath like this. Uh, especially if you're like white weenie, like your one creature surviving is not going to stack up against everyone else's Ooh. creature. So I think it's more dependent, uh, but it's still a very strong planeswalker. And that passive is what makes it insanely strong. If you Elish Nord and Wanderer, like probably nothing is killing this. If you have no. a Maze of Ith or something to back it up, like really nothing is killing this, right? Mm. So you just need one good, strong blocker, and then your Wanderer is safe. Um, Fog bank, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> like, what else can oh, we do? Sure. Yes, right? like, block it for days. I mean, plus, <laughs> you got to think too, like, blinking something every turn 
that's probably four mana. Teleportation Circle, uh, Thassa's four mana, Conjurer's Closet's five mana. So if you think of it as one of those effects where you're paying a little bit more to get the flexibility of Wrathing, from mm-hmm. that perspective, I think it actually looks kind of efficient if you're a, you're a Blink deck or can take advantage of that effect. Also, just to clarify, right. I don't run Elspeth in every deck. I just put it in my like weenie <laughs> go wide decks. Just to throw it in there. But yeah, she's good in tokens. She still is like really good in tokens. Yeah. And, stuff, and Eternal yeah, is like, going to be solid. And like, if you're in like a kind of maybe Voltron, not even Voltron, but like something that focuses on big creatures or blink. But we generally speak, it's going to be blink. I think. Would right. you play five. this in your Akiri deck then? No, no, I don't think so. I mean, it's making double check. strike creatures is kind of good with, co- with equipment. That's not bad. I'm, this, yeah. this is snap going right into my Ojutai Voltron deck, right? Like well, it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, for Voltron, like, it's, it's amazing. The the, the wrath of... for Voltron is really good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and you get a Vigilant Ojutai, so you can play defense with it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, yep. I like yeah. that And idea. if you don't have Ojutai on the battlefield, but you have equipment, then you can just play a double striker, and then you can equip the equipment on that and get double combat triggers. It's, like, not bad. Yeah, like, this is good. It's a very solid Planeswalker. Mm-hmm. What is more staply, Eternal Wanderer or Elish Nord? Mother of Runes. So, Seth? thinks it's wanderer i'm i'm saying i think wanderer will see more i think what i said is that wanderer will see more play when we look back six months or a year from now wanderer will be in more decks than elish norn wander is six dollars and i will stand I, I by think, that i i almost now i think i feel like i agree with seth on that because again when when i what i said earlier i wouldn't just play panharmonicon in any deck Right, so I really need the stack. Like I'm, I would then really have to then look at the stacks part. I obviously don't care about the vigilant four seven. So, uh, like this does more. This just does more, and it feels like it can go in more decks for me. And it's also nice that it's not like seventy dollars. So, like, why wouldn't this just be in more decks? Why would I almost feel like this is definitely just more decks and and in the decks that can take advantage of Elishnorn? Sure, she's great, but like. Eternal Wanderer, I think, is a better overall card. I think Elish Nord is going to be more popular. <laughs> <laughs> I think I disagree with Chris. So I think Elish Nord is the stronger card, but because it's so expensive and because there's this moral gray area with it, mm. I think it'll be less played than Eternal Wanderer. So we'll see Eternal Wanderer in much more decks. Um, but yeah. I don't know. That's Who's more popular? My vote's Elish Norn Elish Norn. must be way more popular as a character, right? The Wanderer? Yeah. No, no one cares yeah. about Yeah, Elish Norn's pretty iconic, yeah. They made her the face Elish of an just... entire set. Yeah. Wanderer's the face the... of standard. Although they made true? Olivia Wanderer? Voldera in the face of <laughs> means a lot Crimson me. Vow, and nobody cared about that, so <laughs> I don't even know anymore. Maybe it was like a gamble. All right, Seth, what do you have for us? I have... A random little uncommon, which I really think is one of the sleepers from this set that I don't hear anyone talking about. And that card is Vat of Rebirth. Vat of Rebirth is a one-mana artifact. It says, whenever another artifact or creature you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put an oil counter on Vat of Rebirth, and then you can pay three and tap it. Remove four oil counters from Vat of Rebirth and reanimate a creature. Return target creature from a graveyard to the battlefield can only do it as a sorcery. This is a card that I think is actually really really strong it's only one mana to get on the battlefield and then it offers repeatable three mana reanimation which is actually pretty efficient i know you need oil counters but it's very important to point out this card does not seem non-token artifact or creature so this means all of your treasure tokens are going to be adding counters to this in a treasure deck something like prosper or agnes it's going to be so easy to be keeping this powered up and reanimating potentially every turn. The same is true of sacrifice decks. If you're playing like a Korvald style deck where you're making a bunch of doors, Eloise clue tokens is built around combos. Mm -hmm. They have infinite artifacts going into the graveyard. Like you're going to have all the oil counters you could possibly need. Aristocrats decks like Yagmoth is built around like looping creatures from the graveyard, all the sacrifice stuff. So I think, Index like that, where you can easily support the oil counters, I think this is a very playable reanimation effect. Also, you don't have to, like, exile the creature. It doesn't have any drawback that you, like, put it into play, and then if it leaves the battlefield, it goes to exile, which is really nice compared to many of the recent versions of similar repeatable reanimation effects, which are kind of like one shot. You get back your thing, but the risk is if that thing dies, and it's gone forever. So, I don't think you can play it in every deck. you got to have a plan for having stuff going into the graveyard to power it up, but there's some decks that do that 
incidentally, just for executing their game plan, you're having four things going in out of the graveyard every turn anyway. And in those decks, I think this card is just actually legitimately really, really good. And it's going to be super budget friendly because it's an uncommon. I mean, you sold me. Yeah, this card's this card's super <laughs> gas. In, in, in the decks that can trigger it very often, which is uh, these are Ristocats, Treasures, Tokens, Token decks, especially. Yeah. Any kind of token deck. I think this card's really good. And then maybe you get some like weird oil synergies, like the Filigree Silex, you remove 10 oil counters and deal 10 damage. Like you can get some weird synergies like that in very specific decks. But really, it's a, it's a treasure slash clue slash aristocrat style card for me. I like it. Yeah. Combos with weird safe house. A plus. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what? Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, how does the combo of mirror and safe house? It's an artifact. Oh, because when so it dies, sack it as a uh, fetch land. <laughs> you get an oil. <laughs> three mana fetch lands. Yo. <laughs> and it's only three mana to reanimate. Combo, that's pretty, by the way. Combo. That's pretty cheap. Like that's only one more than animate dad yeah, or whatever. The, the like, that's, that that's, it's not that bad. It. So, so would you Every put this turn. in a generic deck, or do you have to have synergies? Like, you know how people just randomly and they put Mimic Vat in a deck that's, like, for value? Well, would you do that? I mean, Mimic Vat's anymore. kind of... I do sometimes, <laughs> just because I like Mimic Vat. I just like Mimic that's, Vat. It's a cool so card. It feels so 2011. Um, it, it yeah, is. it is, but I don't think you... The, the awkward part of this card, I went over the good. The bad is, I don't think you can play this in, like, Reanimator, for example, even though it's a reanimation card, because you're probably not going to get enough oil counters. So I don't think... Or, like, a mono black, just mono black generic good stuff, devotion, whatever, a lot of blacks. I don't think you can do it. I think if you're, like, maybe using this once, it's pretty bad. I'm interested in this index where... I'm reanimating at least every other turn, and ideally every turn I'm getting four oil counters because I'm just making so many treasures and I'm making so many clues and I'm sacking so many things. So I don't think you can really play in a generic deck, even a generic reanimator deck. I don't think you, unless you have another way to get oil counters, maybe you can proliferate them or something or have some synergy, but I don't think you can play it in just a random deck. All right, and we can finally answer the question of what motor oil do you use? <laughs> ah, oil the, is... the fluid, the fluid question no. is back, yes. <laughs> Let's talk All right. fluids. No. All right, next up, uh, runner-up for best card of the year. <laughs> runner sword up. of Forge and Frontier. <laughs> So Slightly it's a new sword. It's a new sword of X and Y, okay? It's three mana. Mm. It's an equipment at Mythic. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has protection from red and green. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, exile the top two cards of your library. You may play those cards this turn. You may play an additional land this turn. Equip two. Now, we actually talked about this card on uh, the other podcast, and Seth said it was the best sword and I mm-hmm. kind of scoffed at that. <laughs> but upon further reflection, I believe Seth is right. This hey! is actually the best sword. Uh, of, all, of all the swords. Of all the swords, right? Uh, so I, I think Feast and Famine has the highest ceiling. But for like an average deck, like this is where you want to be. And what really sold me is that you can play no basics with this sword. No, oh, like, come yep. on. You, you can play multiple. Yeah. Like, the, 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 problem yeah. with, like, the problem yes. with all of the ramp is you run out of basics. Or you That's have to play too many problem. basics. You should just run more basics. <laughs> but you're diluting your power. But now you can play all the MBFCs you want. And you the sword can actually movement. play them. Need right? The, the sword can play your Field of the Dead and everything. Like You can actually yeah. run like zero basics and ramp with this sword still. So, so I, I put it above Hearth and Home for just generic ramp. Yeah, uh, I put it as the best sword. And uh, when you start building any deck, like now, better first than you put in Mirrored Safe House, then you put in Sword of Forge and Frontier, <laughs> and then you, you start you start your deck just, building process. Richard's Absolutely. just out here straight up, and Seth just straight up disrespecting <laughs> yes. Body and Mind. Wait, 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 I'm disrespecting okay. it. Too. Body and Mind towers up Mirrored yeah, Safe yeah, House. All, you're it all gets a little wrong. upgrade. Okay. Okay. I want wrong. to be built. Um, oh. But oh yeah, how, Cover was how, around for Crim's sword opinions. No, I was I'm there. Right? Crim, Crim, Crim how do you rank? How do you rank the swords, Crim? Yo, I'm, I'm a, let, what, let's have a seat. Pull up a chair into my office. Let me tell you how it goes. All right, body and mind. I, body and mind is just the auto include. That's where I start, and then you wow. go like, <laughs> and then you go into feast and famine, and then fire and ice. Right. 
And then what, what do you have after that? Uh, uh, like like light and shadow, and mm. then you have sword of sinew and steel, and then it's hearth and home, <laughs> and then it's this, and then oh, it's gosh. war and peace. Yeah, you rank it <laughs> exact opposite of how I almost exactly. <laughs> I agree on war and peace not yeah, being war that good, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but this, like, ah, this ah. is so good. I okay, think it's kind of the same in top over. three. I, I think it's equal of Hearth and Home, but it really depends on the deck. Like, I thought Richard would have Hearth and Home still number one because every single deck is a spirited companion deck, obviously. So, I, I, I thought about that. <laughs> every deck is a <laughs> white so, so Originally, white my ranking deck. was Feast and Famine, and then yeah. this was in the second tier with Hearth and Home and yeah. Fire and Ice. I think we overrate Fire and Ice due to nostalgia. I think it's actually a lot worse than what it yeah. actually is. Okay. And I think in a generic deck, this is stronger than Hearth and Home, but obviously. If you're playing an Elish Norn deck or whatever, right? You put the hearth and home in, right? But the basics thing, the basics thing, you run out of basics quite frequently. So this this puts it over the top and you got to dig too deep, right? Um, I mean, draw essentially draw to play an additional land this turn is just very good. Like that's just amazing. This card card is good, right? But like does does the, in in multicolor, right? In, in, not multicolor, in, in a multiplayer format, I think I've, I, I'm just valuing the color of protection more than anything else, right? Red and green are just colors I don't care about usually. Red maybe because of Blasphemous Act or whatever, but like outside of that, unless there's one brave person, I, I think I've only played my one friend who actually did lightning bolt me in the face and I did lose to that. Uh, like, like, <laughs> like, uh, like the, the, the colors matter. Right, the color the, the color protection really matters. So when I start thinking about that, that's why I I rate like light and shadow highly, and sinew and steel, and you know like obviously uh, the Golgari colors. The the body and mind one. Okay, there's no real protection there. I just like milling, so that's more of a pet <laughs> card. But uh, in, in all seriousness, I I think that the red and green protection and like whatnot just isn't good. And like it, it's I need more. I want I want to know that my stuff is good in a multicolor table. Or multiplayer like table, right? But doesn't this help? You, I think, you have to deal combat damage to it. So uh, the yeah. fact that you can get around green blockers is very relevant, doesn't it? Otherwise, like the card doesn't really do that much. That's it, yeah. That's what I was gonna say. It's like very bad at preventing removal. Like other swords are way better at that. But mm-hmm. green is so popular in commander. Uh, I think pro green helps guarantee you're getting in those those sword hits and drawing the cards and ramping like Tomer was saying. So I actually the think the green protection is like dagger, kind of right? sneaky, sneaky, powerful. <laughs> but then, so then we are willing to admit that maybe Richard needs to dial it back a second. <laughs> best sword, dude. Oh, <laughs> best sword. I'm I'm right there with him. I'm right there with him. Give us his power ranking. Over body and mind. Yeah. Yeah. Sword of Cauldron, whatever doesn't count. Give me the real yeah. sense. Sword of Cauldron. <laughs> where where are you at, Tomer? <laughs> sword of Calder number yeah. are we counting helms and shields because no, the, yeah. the sword of x and y's the sword of x and y's all right i, I Give think us your power I think, ranking. I think feast is ah i i i'd say feast and famine probably still number one because it could like it makes you it makes you like five plus mana every single time you hit which is pretty insane and then it combos very easily so feast and famine number one number two probably this and then number three is Hearth and Home. Hearth and Home, you really need to be in a deck that has blink uh, payoffs or a deck that can combo fill. Like it can combo with like Aurelia, for example, where if you blink it, you can keep taking extra combats and stuff like that. So um, yeah, yeah, I think this is number two. All right, all right, all right, all right. Meet me in the middle then, Tumor. How about fourth body and mind? Body of mind is, <laughs> for is my eleven body. for my birthday. <laughs> it is. It is. For my yes, birthday. It is. Body of mind is. It is I put it on. I put it on as eleventh. Wait, it's your birthday. <laughs> Uh, well, it, it it was a day ago of filming. So, happy birthday! It's still no, 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 11. no, 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 no. Happy, I'll put no, it ten. Don't say happy birthday. Okay. Oh, come on, tenth. That's all. I bumped got. it up, dude. <laughs> yeah. There's I not even it. eleven swords. I would take a sort of called body and right? mind. A body and mind. Lo- it's the worst one. It is the it is the literal worst one. It's the one it that I'm actually thankful if you one. if you target me with this. Yes, I'm trying to be hit me. to be targeted with a sword. All right. All right. See? So you draw actually no ire from the table. They even let it happen. No, but it doesn't it, it's like a It's a group hug card. It's a group hug card. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Essentially. It's the sneaky good sword. You talk, you, you got, Richard, you just, Richard but, just tried to say sneaky like like sword, but yo, body and mind is the sneaky sword here. When I play against Krim, the most feared thing is, like, getting milled by him. Because, like, we usually play some weird janky five-card combo with no redundancy. And yeah. if one of those, like, pieces goes in the graveyard, your mm-hmm. whole deck is ruined. 
So when I play curling, I'm like, oh, I'm sweating it. I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, my mill. That's the only time that never, mill never. and, like, theft effects are super relevant. Like, the only time I'm sweating from a gaunty is when I'm playing, like, Calder or whatever. And that, like, it just so happens. Every single time I bring out, like, Calder or some stupid janky combo, it's like, Krim is like, oh, I'm playing gaunty, you guys. I'm playing a theft deck. Like, I'm playing Evelyn. I'm really going out of my comfort zone. And he's just like, no, God. And then he targets me. I'm like, ah. <laughs> All right, right Tober. What, what do you have next for us? Um. Oh, okay. So I have one that I believe is going to be. This is my pick for the card that's going to see the most play. I wanted to steal this from Tomer. Yeah, this is going to be seeing the most play out of all the cards in the set in in a year from now. This is my my choice over Elish Norn. Uh, this is another white card, actually. Uh, Clever Concealment. It's a two and double white, so four mana total instant with Convoke. And Convoke means your creatures can help cast a spell. Each creature you tap while casting the spell may uh, pays for one or one mana of that creature's color. So if you tap four creatures and at least two of them were white, you can cast this for free. Um, and any number of target non-land permanents you control phase out. So this card basically can protect your entire board, similar to a Teferi's protection effect, um, but you can cast it fairly reliably, I would say, for like two to maybe even zero mana. Four mana is a lot to keep up. Uh, to protect your board from stuff, but it does really protect everything. Just like at the various protection, it doesn't protect just your creatures like a flawless maneuver effect. It, it protects everything, even from exile effects. It's phasing, so it gets it. It will save you from literally any any type of effect. The various protection protects your for, uh, your life total from dying, which is a, a big step up as well. But it's always three mana. This can be essentially zero mana and also to various protections like fifty dollars or whatever this one i thought was going to be a lot cheaper but like the pre-sale is already ten dollars whatever i would put this in a lot of white decks honestly uh like i just i was just thinking about it like am i going to put it in like a deck that just like tap out and sometimes yes like if i'm playing like ishin for example and i just like play one or two creatures on my turn or i make a couple tokens that i didn't have they have summoning sickness or whatever and i tap out that way and then i pass the turn uh, I can cast this for like zero to one to two mana pretty reliably, and if I'm casting this for two mana reliably, I think this card is absolutely cracked. I th- yeah, I, I as the kids would say, this is a uh, very cash money. This card, <laughs> <laughs> like this card, is very good. <laughs> okay, I I I don't know like why you wouldn't play this, right? This is Teferi's Pro Two, right? Like they, it costs, uh, it could cost less. It could be free. Again, and especially this is because of Convoke, it really incentivizes you to be playing it in a creature deck, right? Mm -hmm. So in my humans deck, all of them have some sort of like white mana attached to them, right? That could be free. This card is so good. I would pay this every time. For two mana, I'd be happy. For anything less than, than, than three or even three on the dot, I love this thing. This is like one of the cards I also wanted to like pick for the set, so I was happy that somebody picked it because holy cow, this card is good! It saves everything this, except not this, this card is this card is good, but it is way worse than Teferi's protection. Like <laughs> it is very good. It is good for saving yourself from like removal or a farewell. It's nice and it all hits all the non land permanents, but a decent percentage of the time when someone's casting a Teferi's protection. It's a like, oh, you're killing me. I got to get out of here to save myself. This card isn't, it can't do that. So I think this is better than like the other options for saving your board from stuff. The, the root bound defense is probably better than flawless maneuver, even though flawless maneuver is like always free, unbreakable for a uh, foundation. Like I think it's an upgrade over those cards, but I do think it's like a tier or two below the like, you know s plus to fairies protection just because it isn't the like get out of jail free i'm dying right now but just kidding i'm not gonna die type thing it's not a get out of jail free for sure but like to be a tier or two below like to fairies pro is very good oh it's still a very good card like that would still make it like an a tier card or whatever so i still think it's like very good but yeah, yeah, I don't Teferi's think it's protection is like protection. obnoxious level, and this one is like a yeah. step below obnoxious. It's like it's just very good. Like <laughs> also, like Correct. little. I know we're not Cash we're not money. a finance cast, yeah. but like if you get the Boros Commander precon, you get this card and Flawless Maneuver along with a bunch of other stuff. So yeah. it seems like that precon might be worth picking up because it has some actually very good and pretty valuable cards, and it has some equipment. 
I think. It does. I love equipment. I'm, I'm not as yeah, high yeah, on yeah. this card as you guys. As the... <laughs> Oh, I, would not, I would not call it a Teferi's protection. I would call it it's not, a slightly better flawless maneuver, right? Like there's a tra- it's a trade off of flawless maneuver, and like you don't jam flawless maneuver in every deck. You jam Teferi's protection in every deck, right? And yeah. the problem yeah. is you don't have unlimited deck slots, right? So you put in Teferi's pro, and then what, right? Like do you, you put, put this thing this. in as a backup, and then a Chroma's will, and then this? <laughs> well, the, the like, thing, difference between this and flawless is flawless doesn't protect your not your non creature cards. Yeah, it, it doesn't protect your non creatures, and, and then only you get exiled still, right? So yeah, then you get exiled you. still. Yeah. So like, yeah, so all those are going to be free, but this one, like, imagine you just like cast a couple birds and you pass. And then suddenly somebody tries to wipe your board of everything. You're you're Biden of the bird staple, and then you're just like, boom! I tap my birds. I cast this for two mana, or even one mana, maybe. Ooh, or free, or free. I, mean, I think the best thing to do with this is just phase out your creatures, wrath the board, like sorcery yeah. speed. Yeah, sure. Right? Probably. Like, but I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't play that much flawless maneuver. So to me, it's like you put into Fairies Pro, and then your other slots need to be. Like, you know, Generous Gift or something, right? Or Dawn Charm or something, right? Like, you can't just put in all Teferi's pros, right? Dawn and this is not Teferi's pro. So, <laughs> That's I don't what know. You think, it, buddy. It, it's good, but I don't think it's, like, that crazy of a card. In a crit what? meta, I would always jam, like, at least three board wipe protections. <laughs> yeah. In a crim meta, I would also play. Like, my whole humans deck is... I. When you are the board wiping person, you when you play the aggro deck, you psych yourself out. So it's like, hmm, <laughs> what if they also play thirty two board wipes? <laughs> well, I'm ready. So I, I I don't know. This is this is so good. I just don't see how I, this isn't like a staple. And it's just funny to me that in the year twenty twenty three, it's indestructible. Oh well, you know, indestructible doesn't mean that much anymore. It's like whatever. Yeah. So like like it's hilarious. It's an arms to me. race between board yeah. wipes and board protection. Like oh. Everything has indestructible now thanks to heroic intervention and Boros Charm and stuff. All right, farewell. It exiles. Oh, farewell is too good? Well, let's just phase out. And then the next step is going to be like everything phases in. Split second, everything phases in. Exile all permanents. Like that's going to be the, that's going to be 2024's board wipe. Like and you get to make the like like I like gouging like just like cringe joke of I guess it wasn't a phase, or it was a phase, Mom. No. <laughs> I'm waiting for the nothing can phase in <laughs> this turn <Yeah>. card. <laughs> that, that's what that's what's going to stop. This is the cycle of Kayla's thing, that. but kinda, that's too tame. We kind of got one. Yeah, it's I really bad. I, I think it needs to be better. You need right, to have, it has to have flash. It has to be three mana. It has to ETB draw card. Hire me with this. <laughs> it has to be Monicon as well. <laughs> yeah. 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 What do you have next for us? <laughs> well, I have a card that I don't see anybody talking about. Uh, but if you are talking about out there, listeners, I tip my cloak to you, I guess. Uh, all right. It's Zenith Chronicler, a two-mana artifact, 3-1. It's a creature. Uh, whenever a player casts their first multicolored spell each turn, each other player draws a card. This card is sweet, right? Like, I mean, okay. If a player casts their first multicolored spell on each turn, this includes, you know, turns that aren't theirs. Everyone else draws the card. I, everyone plays multicolored things. Okay, Richard on Mono White will benefit from this the most. But, like, <laughs> outside of that, like, everyone plays multicolored. Like, I, I I included, you know, play Grixis all the time. Seth literally plays five color every other day. So, so I, like, like, there's... And then Tomer plays lots of multicolored. This is just going to draw a lot of cards around the table. And it pairs perfectly with my Notion Thief. <laughs> So I'm really excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that, makes, oh, that makes sense. I, I, I was sense. thinking like Tomer loves pretty, group hug. So, I do not like group yeah. hug. I am not running this Tomer, card. Group hug guy Tomer, what number one? This is like, <laughs> like <laughs> what is this? What is this card good for? Group hug and like notion thief decks. Both decks that I do not, I do not enjoy. This is they, not those scream Tomer. <laughs> and on top of that, you, okay, but you do love artifact decks. You actually I, do like artifact decks and. <laughs> I don't see why you wouldn't want to draw from everyone else's multicolored nonsense. Because my opponents are draw also too, drawing though. off it. Yeah. yeah, but that's fine. Your deck's gonna win anyways because you're a combo deck, right? Like so, like I don't know. I like I like uh, every, I artifact I combo <laughs> I, every artifact deck. Combo deck. Every artifact deck is a just, combo deck. I was just looking through some of my five color decks and like 
they don't play that many two color cards or three color multicolor cards. Like a lot of them are just playing like mono color cards of a bunch of different colors. I don't Maybe. know. Like I like this card, but I don't know if I'd play it outside of group hug. I feel like it's one of those. Even when it tra- you play the card, your opponent plays a multicolor card, you get a card, but two other opponents get a card. Yeah. It's a pretty like group huggy play pattern where like you're playing the card and it's benefiting everyone just as much as it's benefiting you. Your opponents are benefiting and- less, but there's still two like there's still four uh, three opponents on one of you so you're still giving your opponents more cards than you're getting so i don't know this is I mean, to me if, if you're if you're going over like yeah like if you calculate how many like cards in total you're giving out to the table mm-hmm. this that means you're milling right <laughs> so, yeah like, but then like, if you pair with notion <laughs> thieves then you get to <laughs> roll all the cards i, I get it okay, i got but, a but, okay, but i see it, where you're like, going with this no but like legitimately you are making the table draw more cards they will draw out <laughs> you see like so, this so. I'm this looking at EDH rec at their top staples just to see. So Assassin's Trophy is a multicolored card that sees a lot of play. Uh, does Ignoble High Art count? Like if you're multi no, identity, no. but no. So it actually has to be okay. So Boros Charm, Anguish Unmaking. Yep, yep. Dovin's Veto, Rhythm of Wild, Growth Spiral, Terminate. Terminate. Lo- they're they're kind of like-, like situational team or ascendancy. Like a lot of these are just like removal or situational cards. And there's not that many. Like we're so even though there are a lot of multicolor decks, most people play like single color spells. So I actually don't know how often this would just trigger in like a random. You see, oh, then, void then, rent then, is here though. Yeah, you see void rent Bailful people strips. out there. Are the Bailful void rents? They're 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 on Flavor Town. They're in Flavor Town if they're playing void rent. They know what's up. You know what? <laughs> May, it, it could be meta dependent, right? Because a lot of the friends I do play with, we do play a lot of the multicolored cards, right? Because why? The the Ravnica cards are cool and things like that. So. I, I don't know. I just don't see why I wouldn't let this sit there and just gather a bunch of people cards, connect a few times with okay. Sword of Body what, what and Mind. What if you just play Howling Mind? <laughs> <laughs> well, we you see, Richard, <laughs> I had a common deck, both? and it did play Howling Mind. <laughs> you know what? There's there's a card that I actually think you would love. I think it was like Storyteller or something. It's a... Uh, yes, yes. Heartwood Storyteller. Let me tell you, Krim. This is the card you've been you've been dying for, if you like this one. <laughs> it's also three mana. It's a 2-3 creature. It's a tree folk. This is two mana. And w- oh, well, this is even better, though. Look at the triggered ability here. <laughs> Whenever a player casts a non-creature spell, each of that player's opponents may draw a card. That's a lot but of... That's damn. a lot of triggers. People <laughs> cast non-creature spells all the time. All the it's time. So it's it's, like, it's ah! just a green... But it's green. <laughs> That's so you set the wrong green. Yeah, you're in the right. But what, what would I do with a green card? Why would I even own that? <laughs> this is what you want, though. You're looking at yeah, Zenith but, Chronicler, and well, I'm you telling you. Well, you remember how Richard so... said the, the artifact thingy for ramp in colors that aren't green? Well, let me tell you then. This now means other colors that aren't green have that effect. And most importantly, I think the artwork's cute. You can go so Simic, though. You can go no. Soul Tie. Your no. favorite. Look, Saltai is like like the one blue black variant that I'm like, uh, I guess <laughs> that that I, I will play. But like this card, just an exciting, fun card for me. I, I like right. it. It looks cute, and it, it's like a an adorable little like octopus, but Phyrexian form. It's cute, right? <laughs> Have you seen the artwork for one of the cards? I forgot. It's it's a three mana thingy, uh, uh, Annex Sentry, and it's like playing with something that looks like this. It's like a Phyrexian cat. <laughs> I mean, Which I'll give you exists, that. Which actually I found it's out. It's a Phyrexian it construct. Is a cute card. Can, we have lots of constructs. Yeah, but this construct is so cute. And look at it. It's adorable. It's like Wally. Yeah. Just, just don't get the it's anime group version. Hug, it's group hug. It's Yo, they give me an anime version tomorrow. of this. I'm on board. I'm, 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 I'm going to have dude. Oh, a Wally Halter of that it, would be it sick. It can wear a sort of body and mind very well. I'll give oh, you that. It, dude, it becomes a 5-3. Do not do not laugh at a 5-3. It's going to swing on you and make you draw cards. <laughs> all right. Okay, Seth, you what laugh. do you have for us? You know, get us all away right. from this anime we, we, Wally. We, we, got, we got maybe the, <laughs> the most ridiculous card from the set. This oh, is the card that ridiculous? The card is sick. I don't. I don't know if I'll ever play this card, but wow, does it do things. And that is Icker Moon Gauntlet. It's a three-minute artifact that says, Planeswalkers you control have zero pl- proliferate and negative 12 take an extra turn after this one. And as a bonus, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you choose a counter on target permanent, and you add an additional counter of that kind to that permanent. So this is, on level one, 
pretty obviously an absurd Super Friends card. Like, in a Super Friends deck, this does everything you want. As you're casting your spells, you get to add more loyalty counters to your Planeswalkers, and then giving your Planeswalkers zero proliferate is really, really strong, because it essentially is plus one, but it's like plus one for all your Planeswalkers, because you get to add a loyalty counter to all of your Planeswalkers and anything else, and then if you get enough Planeswalkers, this kind of just wins the game, because you can uh, proliferate the plus one on a bunch of them, and then get to 12 loyalty on one, and take an extra turn, and then do the same thing, do the proliferate with a bunch of them, and take an extra turn, so you kind of get infinite turns, or at least a bunch of turns in a row. Uh, So I think this card is just absolutely ridiculous. Maybe the best Super Friends support card that has ever been printed. I think there's also, like, other jank potential if you really care about putting charge counters on things or whatever. Mm, the last mm-hmm. mode is actually like kind of nice or even a plus one plus one counter deck. There's some other like fun potentials there, but I think the the most obvious home is going to be in Super Friends where this card is just ridiculous. I, I think mean, this card's really it, gas. I just I I, so I, cool. I despise Super Friends, so I'm just fine. Yeah, same. It's fine. I, I That's probably friends. why I won't play it. Is I, I ran into this when I went to SCG New Jersey a little while ago, <laughs> and I was playing the attraction deck, and I'd get like ten attractions yeah. open, and I'd have to roll and like resolve all of them, and I started to feel bad about like playing my deck because it would just take so long. Super Friends has a little bit of that same problem where you have like all these permanents have all these abilities, and now they each get two extra abilities thanks to Iker Moon Gauntlet, and for each one you got to think like which of these five abilities should I be activating, and then you move on. To the next one so i don't know if i'd actually build a super friends deck just because i don't want to sit there and have to play it in paper with how long it takes but if i did this yeah. would be the first not uh, first non planeswalker i'd add in for sure I, mean, I don't think it's going to make it's going to make or break super friends like they're gonna it, it's just it just follows the same play pattern so like okay you put on the gauntlet and you have like six or so planeswalkers you you can win the game it's fine and if you're taking a long time then i get to go to the bathroom and stuff and you'll just like <laughs> You'll 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 text me once once you've reached uh, a, a, a climax of some sort. Wow! I don't know. Wow! 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 You think I just sit around, Homer? <laughs> wow, that feels very targeted. First off, because I don't have a Super Friends deck for <laughs> sure. <laughs> A second off, if I did, it would be Amanatu, and I would say this card is awesome, and, and, I, and that is exactly how it goes. <laughs> Give me a half an hour, everybody. I'm activating things, and I'm activating them again. Which one did I activate? Keep track with me. I don't care. <laughs> like, I trust you. The so one I'm dead. Add two more modes to confuse my thought process even more. I'm going to play some Marvel Snap. Tell me when I'm yeah, dead, Krim. All right. You would get, like you would probably hit infinity rank before i i'm done with my turn to be honest with you. like i i will I, I will be very honest here this card is very very obviously meant for super friends mm-hmm. but and it, it goes off in 50 different ways but so seth do you like it like that's the given right but do we like it just as a proliferate card so I think it's interesting. I'm excited for it in a charge counter deck. That's the other place I'm really hyped for it. Like adding counters to Lux Cannon or trying to win with Dark Steel Reactor, or it seems kind of easy to take infinite turns with Magistrate Scepter. Like Stop, you only need that out there. three counters on it and you're able to take tap it to take an extra turn, which that's only two non creature spells in a world of cantrips and like card draw. That seems pretty easy to not take like deterministically infinite turns, but enough turns that you should be able to win the game. So I think there's enough shenanigans shenanigans in other decks that I would consider playing it. I don't think, like, adding a plus one, plus one counter isn't super intriguing to me. Like, I don't know if that's enough or, like, another negative one, negative one counter. But in some sort of, like, charge counter proliferate deck, I would definitely consider that as well, where I think just, like, the the last mode could be a standalone card. Like, even without the Planeswalker mode, just that, that last effect is good enough that I would play a card that just had that text on it in some decks. See, because I, I was curious about that, you know, I... I, I... Don't know if I like it enough for the second part, but that's because the second part, all the counters, like you had mentioned, are charge counters, and those are kind of fringe, right? This card yeah. is very good. Like, like and it's funny is how bad this is outside of like any sixty, like outside of the sixty card, or how bad it is in sixty card formats. Um, but yes, this card, I do like it a lot. It's one of the cards I wanted to talk about because I think as a design space, I think this is really cool. Just something that gives a blanket like, hey, all your planeswalkers have other abilities that they could do. I hope they continue to do this as a, you know, Super Friends fanboy 69420, uh, my other handle on Moto. Uh, <laughs> like, th- this this is, th- it's just cool f- design space. I really like that. It just adds more to a planeswalker. So, 
I like this card a lot. I don't know if it's actually good. I don't think it's good outside of Super Friends. It's too fringe, right? It's too narrow, is it? Well, like, it's not proliferate. I mean, it's put an yeah. additional counter on If you paid two yeah, more mana, me. then you get an Exorable Tide, which is a five mana blue enchantment that says whenever you cast right. a spell, proliferate. Which is going to be well, way stronger than this in a in a deck that cares about proliferating. But like, if you only care about char- like putting counters on one thing, like if you have a if you have a commander, for example, that really cares about getting like one very specific uh, counter on it, and it, it really pays off, I guess, then that's that's that could be worthwhile. But like, I think it's like really getting super friends of happening or whatever, right? Yeah, Where people are not permanence right not permanence yeah <laughs> so it doesn't work like you can't add poison counters either so i think that's intentionally worded uh, uh worded that way well, i what's think the most bounce? abilities on a planeswalker we have like mm-hmm. five so with this and like like urza right Lore, Wait, oh, oh the backside yeah. of urza oh. this would be seven <laughs> <laughs> and then there's that Oh, well, isn't there a uh, Kiora or something that adds abilities? What was a Simic Planeswalker oh, that gives us Oh, Kazmina Kizmina or something. Yeah. Kizmina. Kizmina, yeah. So you could probably get like 10, 10 abilities. And on then you could turn them into so dragons cool. of Sarkon. <laughs> you, you know yeah. what's not a... Jace. The Jace that like clones himself. Now oh, he can just when keep he cloning and proliferating. Yeah. And then take yes. extra turns. Yes. That's what yes. did it. We finally made oh, that's the actually card. Kind of we finally hilarious. broke that made Super Friends. Work. <laughs> I think this I card it. is cool, and I don't think it's like b- broken or anything. I think it's like a, it's a cool card, well designed. It's just that I get tired, and then I, I, if you if you have like six or so planeswalkers on the battlefield, it'll take a long time. But like you've assembled six planeswalkers, so like, I think you deserve yeah. to win. That, so that hopefully, is you can speed it up and text feat. me when you're done. In, in in commander because every never nobody ever lets you keep one so yeah you i know like if you one. have like five or so things where where this becomes a very scary threat that's gonna like alter or whatever then yeah you you got it you deserve it <laughs> like it's fine <laughs> i i do want to point out one more thing i don't know if it's just me and like because it's obviously anecdotal or could be i think there's a marvel effect now Everything is a gauntlet. There's a bunch of things that just look like <laughs> infinity stones around the arcane it. signet. The, yeah, the arcane <laughs> signet. From dude, is this not the Marvel effect though? Like arcane signet promo. Look that up. Is that okay? I mean, nobody from Wizards is gonna say yeah, dude. That is because obviously that's a different thing. But like, that's the infinity gauntlet, dude. Everything yeah. is the infinity gauntlet. Everything's a cube. Every like Marvel has now just made things that just are like. Not a direct copy, but like at least adjacent to Success Marvel stuff. Success by association. <laughs> remember this cool thing you like, fellow yeah, kids? Well, remember it again, but in yeah. this universe. Yeah. Stop tiptoeing around the Marvel secret layer. Darn it. Give me it. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, I have a card, which I don't think is particularly good, but it's funny. Yeah. Phyrexian Vindicator. White, 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 white. So four mana value, five, five. Creature Phyrexian Horror at Mythic Flying. If damage would be dealt to Phyrexian Vindicator, prevent that damage. When damage is prevented this way, Phyrexian Vindicator deals that much damage to any other target. Uh, the pre-sale price is pretty high. People think this has potential for some reason. Uh, I think it's funny to Blasphemous Act and like shoot someone. Like mm. all the stuffy, you know, the stuffy doll combos. But there are cards that also redirect all damage to a creature. Uh, so you can kind of gain immortality by like siphoning all the damage into this thing and shooting it. And the key difference between this and Obliterator is Obliterator dies. This thing just keeps living. Uh, so, you know, you actually prevent the damage and you get to shoot people back. Is it good? No. Uh, it's funny. It's a four mana five five flying. Uh, the art looks like an ad for a mobile game. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Raid Shadow Legends, <laughs> new hero. I think it's good. It's just like it, it's it another four white hunter. tips for Nyctos. Yeah, I, I mean it is a heavy most. color. It is a heavy color requirement. So that's yeah. that's one of the challenges compared to like a Brash Tauner or a Spite Mare or a Boros Reckoner. Like four white is a lot, but I love cards like this. I love stuffy doll Brash Tauner style decks. I love the synergies. You got a bunch of different combos. They mentioned the Blasphemous Act. You put Guilty Conscience on it, put Pariah on it. So all the damage itself to you goes to it and goes to something else. There's a, there's a ton of synergies here. So I like it. I, I think mean, it's cool. Right. It's not busted. This, I think people dies. know exactly what you're yeah, going to do of. if you cast it, right? Like you're like you're not playing it fairly. You're going to be comboing with it. So like 
I see it as a combo piece. You put it on the battlefield. Yeah. I'm going to assume you're going to try I just combo with a it. blocker for. I don't, believe, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a good blocker. I just is it not? Like, it does block for days. You put it on the battlefield, put this on and a it's a very good blocker. Put it in your carry deck. It's so good. Oh put a sword God. of body and mind on that. Yeah, and- oh, dude. <laughs> That's absurd. why I hate combo players. They ruin everything. I just want to play it fairly. <laughs> I don't want this. I'm going to combo off with it. They're going to murder it. I'm like, I just wanted to block and take no damage. I'm sorry I didn't want to end the game, Richard. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Everyone is going to think you're going to combo with look, it. Look like, at the arm on this thing. It's like a wrong maze or something. That, I don't know what's going on. But, Stop like, the stigmatizing combo players. Dude, I don't know what you're the combo player about, association. Phyrexian Vindicator looks like he's aggressively pointing at you. We're going to a crab boil. That's Wait, that's his like. arm? That big spiky thing is his arm? It's I don't know. I, I thought. Yeah. Wow. Is it, a, that's, it, it looks that's like okay. it's attached. The, the theme of, of uh, Phyrex, white Phyrexia are teeth and teeth hands. Everything's teeth. <laughs> so their hands are teeth. Believe it or not, not. their feet are also teeth. Uh, their Yo, teeth wow. are teeth. I can't tell if Tover is joking or he's serious. No, look at look at every white Phyrexian <laughs> in this set. It's just teeth. It's like somebody has a phobia Tomer, of the dentist, it's, and that's it's not it's not teeth, Tomer. I don't know why, why you're telling people there's that. Teeth everywhere. No, the, like white Phyrexian is just all one gigantic is it cake meme because everything looks like mm. red velvet cake. Like, like uh, everything in white Phyrexian is just red velvet cake, or is it? But is right? it like, is it is it cake or teeth? That's the that's the thing. Is it cake? Dude, when you open it up, you just see teeth. I see red velvet cake. That's all I see in everything. Like I'm hungry when I look. This sounds weird, but when I look at all of the white Phyrexian cards, Phyrexian Vindicator. Why do I think of food? He's aggressively telling you, let's go get red velvet cake. Do you like, like red you know, velvet cake? Mondra, you want a double red velvet cake? Like, this is all just red velvet cake. I mean, if that if that's what they mean by completion, it means come to our cake party, then sign me up. I'm I'm here, right? Like, dude, yeah, I'm Alex here. Nor and I want to be invited. <laughs> they all, all right. just dress like they're in red velvet cake. Tober, what do you have for us? All right. Uh, I, apparently, I just really like aggro, these... Now I I went from the the value train to the aggro train and I just I like I the, the the cards that excite me these days are aggro so this is a new one for token decks roar of resistance this is a one and a red for an enchantment that says creature tokens you control have haste and whenever one or more creatures attack you may pay two mana one and a red if you do creatures attacking your opponents and or planeswalkers they control get plus two plus zero until end of turn this is the best. One of the best anthems, I think, for a red token deck. Um, for giving your creatures haste, it's typically a three mana effect. You're thinking like fervor, rhythm of the wild, and similar. Uh, the only exception to this is like anger, but it needs to be in the graveyard, so that's a special exception. Uh, this is two mana for that effect. And it not just gives your creature tokens haste, but it also acts as a very powerful anthem effect. For two mana, you're pumping up all your creatures for plus two plus oh, which is a sizable amount. It's not nothing. And it can also be used on your opponent's creatures. If your opponents are attacking, you can actually offer them a deal. Like, hey, if you're not attacking me, I can pump up your creatures. It could work out, you could work together to basically deal more damage to your opponent's creatures if you have extra mana laying around. So the fact that it does both for uh, two mana is ridiculously good value and it's going to make it a very powerful in basically any ready to- red token deck. I'm just going to jam this in because it's just really good at haste and then it has extra bonus on top which is a, a fantastic anthem. I think it's even a little better than you said because that last mode it only pumps things that are attacking your opponents, right? So even if uh, like yeah. if I swung out at you and Richard you could still pump. Richard would take more damage, but mm. you wouldn't take any more damage. So I really like that aspect. It reminds me, like, the token part, sure, whatever. It's getting a token deck. That last mode, uh, we've seen, like, Crown of Doom, <clears throat> which goes around the table and gives stuff oh, attacking okay. the person who has it, plus two, plus zero, deal a lot of damage. We've seen Duelist Heritage, the double strike enchantment that you can trigger on your opponent's turn and give one of their creatures double strike. We've seen that take people out as well. I'm very intrigued by, like... How much damage this offers for two mana using it on your opponent's creatures? Like, even outside of the token thing, just having this sit out as a political tool, that's a lot of damage. Two mana for plus two plus oh for the entire team, that's just going to take people out. So I think this card is has potential to be very strong. Yeah, this seems really cool. I, I, 
it's so cheap. Like yeah. I'm talking, like it's. I just love that about it. And uh, I don't know it. It the aggro parts of it. I you know, I know you wouldn't believe this, but I enjoy aggro. <laughs> right? I enjoy aggro. <laughs> Oh, because I, I, I draw it from players and the board state, you know. So like, it's, I love aggro. I'm the true. I'm actually the most aggro player. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> well, I do think that I I like this. This gives me just more ways to close out games and for su- like super cheap. The the big concern I always have with these kind of effects is like it costs a lot of mana, uh, and and it's kind of annoying to to play with because it costs so much, but. This is cool, and it gives me haste already. It does something passively. I like that. My tokens, that is. But yeah, why can you play it outside so of tokens? Good. Yeah, like yes. Would you? I feel like yes. This, I feel like, like you can. This is this yeah. is fire breathing for your whole team, right? For two mana, you get two plus mana. two plus zero for like your whole team. So uh, if you untap with this, you you sink eight mana into this. Everything just got plus eight plus zero. No, if you, play you can it, only do it once. No? Oh, yeah, once, once per ooh. one, yeah, yeah. yeah. once yeah. per yeah. Time. yeah. It's I don't not like fire anymore. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I Go think this card's per bad. I would have been out of a just, token. I was deck. like, isn't this card like insane? Like, you just put oh. a 10 mana, yeah, is wait a minute. Plus eight, like, what? Oh, so you, <laughs> you can only it activate once? it once, yeah. You can give plus two plus so you choose. Would you like to give plus two plus so by paying two mana? It triggers. Okay, that, that, that it triggers hilarious. and you pay your no pay. As, uh, what? Look, as, as the most aggro related player, <laughs> I'm gonna have to give this five thumbs down. I'm wow. I'm no, this is a this is an auto include in any any red token deck. I'm putting. I'm jamming this in any red token deck. What I mean, do you mean? If you really need haste on your tokens, I guess right. Yeah, but you do. The <laughs> effect isn't. Dude, the, 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 the pumping effect is the icing on the red velvet cake, all right? <laughs> you got to have some icing, but you need to have a firm red base. Red velvet cake? Somebody say red velvet cake? Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I guess probably less good outside of token decks using yeah. it once a turn. I still kind of like just like the political aspects, though. Like once around the table, like that's a, so much damage if so you use the, it every turn. The problem with this is... People are not dumb. They know you're just getting them to kill each other. So like, ah, hey, we'll just kill him. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so like, it doesn't work as nicely as you think it does because it requires like consistent cooperation, right? It's not. I guess like you can alpha strike someone, right? But I mean, if, but I if you're putting this, it in the token like, deck, wow, you're going to be using it primarily. Like that's the primary yeah. purpose. Is I want to get. I want to pump my own creatures and make a lethal attack. But the fact that you can use it with your opponents yeah. is like that. The icing on the red velvet. The, on white Phyrexian cake. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Fully. All right. Roar of resistance. All right. Uh, Krim, round I'll us up. I'll take us home. What I'll take us home with take another home, banger Krim. that outside of Zenith Chronicler. <laughs> Staff of Completion. This card is cool. Uh, this is another fun mm-hmm. one. Uh, it, it's a three mana artifact. It's got four modes: pay one life, destroy target permanent you own. This means your own land if you want. Um, pay, pay two life, add one man of any color. Pay three life, proliferate. Pay four life, draw a card. Pay five mana, untap the staff of completion. So, I don't think this is like a universal card. But again, this is just a card I'm hyped on because A, it looks like the Skolomance staff from World of Warcraft. Second off, uh, like, <laughs> Tomer, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? From from Skolomance? Like, the, 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 the original, like, like 60-person dungeon? Okay. Uh, not 60, that's, uh, not a, that's not a term I've heard for many years. I feel yes, like the Titanic exactly. meme. Tap, <laughs> tap into your old gamer mind with me uh. here. And on top of that, it's just... It does, like, some cool things. Like, I love the paying life because I have a life swap, life lowering deck, you know, like a, a self punching deck. And on top of that, being able to pay three life to just proliferate. As more counters are just getting placed throughout magic and stuff like that, I can just pay three to do that. At its floor, I get to just make it a mana rock that hurts me a little. That, But, you know, whatever, it's still a three mana mana rock. And then it can draw me a card for four, which is a lot nicer than a 20 life format. Um, uh, so, uh, being able to. Greatness at any cost, and I truly believe that. So I would pay <laughs> four to draw a card. I don't know. This is just like a really versatile, nice mana rock. Seth, you love drawing cards. Tomer, oh, you, you this, don't. This 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 is like better Hedron Archive, right? <laughs> <laughs> this, I 
I like this card a lot. Although, I, so I'm a big supporter of three mana mana rocks with upside. Two life does scare me. So I, I, I think where I'm at with this card Seth, right now don't, is... Don't, 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 don't do that. You you literally I, put 39 I, life I, on the line for Wheel of Misfortune. <laughs> like, I, think, I, don't, yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> two life for a mana, only one mana. So, no, I, I, that's not that the card's bad. I think the card's very good. I think I need to have a specific plan for it, though. Like, mm. I don't think I just throw it in any deck as a mana rock, as a three mana mana rock. I think the life cost is a little too much for me to just be like, like the Celestis. I will jam the Celestis in literally any deck. I think it's good enough and I'll play it. I don't think I'll do that with Staff of Completion. I think I need to have a plan for like the proliferating or the first mode has some like Mm. weird upside because it's a permanent you own rather than one that you control. So this gets uh, kill stuff that your opponents steal from you. Also, especially good with like some... Demonic Pact, Beamtown Bullies, <laughs> like, you can give your opponent something with Beamtown Bullies, and then after Arch- it wrecks uh, them with the level or whatever, then you kill it and get it back in your graveyard to do it again. Oh, so, I don't know. Is there any, is there any way you can just play, like, how big of a cost is two life? Richard, can I play this as a three mana mana rock, or am I just gonna kill just, myself? Just let it be known, though, like, Seth, you just, hold on. This <laughs> card, again, I thought you wanted to draw a draw card. Dude. Four I life, have, but, oh. <laughs> four cards on a mana rock that doesn't sack itself. <laughs> Seth would, if Seth, Seth would say yes. If it, it was if I did play him, this, I will kill it. myself. Like that's a problem. <laughs> if you do, so, if you sneak this into my deck, I will activate it and die. <laughs> I think, <laughs> but, but I have to re- try to avoid that. I think. <laughs> so outside of temptation for blowing yourself up, <laughs> like as a mana rock, is this not just solid? Like I pay two life, yes, or each time I want to add mana. But it's it's that's like a it's like saying it's a mana list solid three mana taps for any color and that's it. Is that solid? I mean, I'm, that mana loss better if you're just using that. I I think three life tap proliferate is very intriguing. Like yeah. if you have synergies for that, that's totally worth it. I think the first mode is interesting. Ah, maybe if I'm a life gain deck, if I'm gaining enough life, or if I'm a life swap deck like Grim's yes. where I'm trying to lower my life total, then I think I'm very happy with this. But if I'm just like building my commander clash deck for the week, looking at my mana rocks, I don't know if I'd throw it in just because I'm I, I think I would kill myself with it, like very this is, often. This is not a real mana rock, okay? Like if you want a mana rock, you play Worn Power Stone, okay? And you <laughs> but actually Worn Power get some Stone mana doesn't draw cards. <laughs> but if you just wanted to draw cards, or, play painful truths or something, right? Like, like actually do the thing. This, this is too this much damage. You use it like both. four times. Like, like you Why still have it? forty life. It's still a limited resource, right? Like, yes, you have some leeway, but you can't just be like throwing away eight mana using your or eight life using your mana rock and then <laughs> drawing a card. You're like down twelve already. Like it's <laughs> it's far too inefficient for what it, it adds does. up. I think whoa, you need whoa, to whoa, actually whoa, whoa, combo. Whoa. Like, you can untap it somehow, right? And do something. I don't know what you would do. Or you need to use its abilities beyond add a mana and draw a card. So that, that proliferate and that destroy needs to actually have some synergies where you're willing to pay life to do that. But I wouldn't pay three mana and four life to draw a card. That's that's ridiculous. <laughs> Why would you do this? <laughs> really? This looks like a oh, combo man. card. I wouldn't really run it outside of that. Or maybe I'd run it in my Selenia Dark Angel life swap deck but even then it's like very slow i guess it's no i guess it is like just like it's just like a mana rock with upside then it's like a three mana rock with upside which is like okay your mana rock should cost two i I know what are we talking about if you don't if you no hey mr mirren safe house all right (laughs) that's a land there's a big difference (laughs) oh wait we don't like we want three mana lands now? <laughs> That's a interest. I want my interest three mana ramping It's called Kodama's Reach. Cultivate gets you uh, two, one in the hand as well, yes, not just one on the battlefield. But we're not all if, blessed to be green. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you are fine with losing life, this card's great. Like, it's great. Sure. Like, if I'm playing Selenia or, like, a Death Shadow deck or something, easy. Like, totally worth it even but at three mana. Is it is, too slow, okay. then, if you're, like, a dedicated life loss deck? Like, don't you need to lose life at a faster clip than this? Like, is it no, no but problem? I mean, you don't aren't you going to play a mana rock in that deck? Like, uh, this is replacing your mana lith or Did whatever. You like, whatever other mana, mana rock. <laughs> <laughs> or Skyblade Relic, though. right? 
Yeah, yeah it's still even then it's just like you either, you either draw over. a card or you make one mana. Like this is not right. like a black market connections uh, or whatever, which is like ridiculously sh- good. You can sure. pay five to untap it. Why is it <laughs> yeah. so much? And Why is it both. five? Shouldn't it be yeah, like, like I don't well, know? It like seems two? extremely safe. Like they were thinking of something and they're like, we gotta nerf this card. We can't let it combo. What what was us if we have another staff of domination uh, in like right in the format? I, I wonder if it was life originally. That would make sense. If it was five life to untap. Oh, then it would be busted. Then you could really do would it? It would be like nine life to draw a card and untap it. That's well, like, if your idea is to do life swap or whatever, and then you're yeah. just like three mana, put this I on guess the battlefield, be... got myself all the way down, and have the mana to combo. Yeah, I guess that's true. Hmm. So how are you going to play it, Grim? This was on your list. Are you just going to run it in like any deck, or is it more of a specific plan card? I mean, yeah, like it's going in my demons deck, my Bal- 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 Balakus, whatever Thar deck, because it's demons, Grixis demons, with of course the life swap like uh, uh, mm-hmm. sub theme. So I love it in that. And then I kind of thought about it, it's like, is this not just a fun mana rock to have because I get to just then draw a card for four life? I mean, yeah, like it's painful. <laughs> it's painful, but like four just, life and three mana. I like I like where your head's at. I just can't trust myself, Grim. I know how this ends. I thought we liked incidental life game. This is like the opposite of incidental life game. It's this is just life random loss. life loss. <laughs> Why not? I mean, if you're life like, swapping, I get it. I want I you to it. think about this. My mana base also has an ancient tomb, so like one turn you're going to see me at 40, and then in a turn cycle I'm going to be at like 20. <laughs> ancient tomb is gas, though. It is gas. It is gas, but so is this card. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if this is like a... a, a a generic three mana like mana rock but i i think i would try it here and there just because like the all the modes seem kind of fun right and something that you can do uh like like and have you know a, a widespread across the deck uh like uh different decks however life loss is the main home for it and that's why yeah. i'm so excited for it and the oil slick version is going to be perfect and the art mm. really it's the artwork that draws me to it as well so i i kind of just love it it looks cool and it's perfect for my life loss deck. All right. Respected. So that does it. We have 12 of our favorite Phyrexia all will be one cards. Uh, let us know in the comments. Uh, what are your favorite cards? What are you excited to brew? I'm looking at our list. We have like 30 cards on it. We had to cut a whole bunch of cards. So the That's set is ridiculous. definitely packed uh, with cards made for Commander or playable in Commander. Uh, so let us know in the comments. And uh, we'll see you back next week. See you, everyone.